friends, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how I've trimmed the Gypsy Palace Tarot. I have taken off these very large borders. Um, I didn't love just how much empty space was on these cards. I just adore the artwork. It's, it's fantastic. Um, I, I really thought it would be great borderless. It took off a lot of real estate. So the original card size, um, it's about standard four, four and three quarters. And now it is at three and three quarters. And it is almost almost two and a half. And the original size was almost three inches. So, um, I mean, it's a lot gone. I decided to leave the titles on, um, the top title. It's got, you know, multiple languages, which normally I really enjoy. It's just so much order. Um, and I'm really happy with the way that this turned out. These cards are beautiful. This artwork is just amazing. It's so vibrant and gorgeous. And I just felt like the art needed to be free. So um, yeah, I'm going to show you how I went about that and um, talk a little bit about the titles. So first of all, um, like with all decks, I went through and uh, checked out whether or not the borders were consistent, you know, all the way around. Are they even on the top and the bottom? Are they even on the sides? And in, in this deck, they are. This, this outer border is pretty consistent across all of the cards. It's not a bunch of different measurements. So I actually only needed one one set of cuts for this for this deck. So I went with 11.5 off the bottom, which keeps the title on. And 10.7 on the top. Seven five on the right and six one on the left. So I'm just gonna do a few of these final cards to show how they uh, how they look as they're being cut. <clears throat> and that I did notice on a few cards that if you go right to the when I go to the 11.5 mark on my guillotine cutter, a tiny bit of the text from the next line is showing. So that's no problem. In that case, I just go a, just a, a hair past 11.5 and take the rest of that off of there. Now you can see there's no, see it better against there, but you can see there's no, none of the text on the, the next line is showing here. Yeah, I got it all. And that'll be accounted for when I, you know, when I go and take the, the top of the card off. I left myself extra room, a little bit of extra room at the top in case that needed to be done. But yeah, that's, that's pretty perfect for those. And one thing I'll, I'll mention as I'm wrapping these up is, um, on the minors, once you take once you take the tops off, you've lost the number. And these cards, you know, just looking at them, I don't know that I would recognize that as the, the nine of wands, or um, or or you know, or this is the eight of swords. Most of the cards don't really have necessarily the swords or the cups or the wands in them. Um, so what I'm planning to do is possibly right in a little bit at the bottom. I've done this a couple times on decks, added in numbers or titles 
um, sometimes I'll use a little coded system with just a number and the elemental symbol. And that works out pretty well for me too. On this one, um, I was thinking I could use an ultra fine Sharpie. Get out of the way. Um, Cause this is the thinnest point Sharpie that I, I believe is made. Um, but it just didn't look that great when I was testing. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure exactly how I'm gonna put the, the numbers back on the cards. I'm gonna have to sort of investigate, see if I can find a pen that maybe has an even finer, something alcohol based that's even finer than this. But the nice thing about having all this extra text at the bottom is you can kind of go in and just practice. I could go in and see like what it would look like if I wrote the numbers on. And it does write very tiny, but I don't really love the way it looks with the existing text. And, and I would be nice if I could find something even a little bit finer than this. Um, I thought about maybe trying to hide the, the number somewhere in, you know, the art, maybe with little dots or some, something inconspicuous that maybe only I would, would notice. So that's, you know, something I'm still considering. It's still under consideration. So, um, if anyone has suggestions, <laughs> feel free to leave them in the comments. I would appreciate it. I'll probably also go into, um, there's a tarot modding group called Tarot with Scissors, a Facebook group that I really enjoy. Lots of great ideas. And um, I'm probably going there and, you know, post my cards and see if anybody has any ideas or suggestions for maybe something even finer than the Sharpie Ultra Fine. <clears throat> and then the final cut is six one off the left side. And then do a couple corner rounds. Finish the deck and I'll, I'll show you the, fin a little bit more of the finished product. With this corner rounder, I wanted to mention, since I was talking about it in my last video, um, I love it. You really have to be careful though, if you use a rounder like this, it's very easy for the card to be a little off center if you don't have it in there just right, which is why I like to look through the, the little spot in the bottom there. If you don't have it centered just right, it's, it's very easy to make a bad corner cut. And um, nobody wants that. <laughs> so this is one where, you know, I really enjoy this very small two millimeter size, but I, find that I really need to go slowly and I really need to make sure it's centered. I try to wiggle it back and forth and if I can't move it, I know I've got it in the right spot. Um, but definitely, if you were to, if you have a corner rounder like this, you probably already know what I'm talking about, but if not and you think this is something you might be interested in, that's something to note and be careful about. but I really think that going a little slower, it's, it's worth it for me because I just really like the way the two millimeter corner looks. So that's it for that. Let me grab my little sanding pad and then uh, let's see if we need to even do any sanding. So after everything's done, I like to take a good look at the edges and the corners 
make sure everything looks good and smooth. These ends look pretty great. I always seem to have a little bit of just, you know, not even a lot, but just very slight variations on the sides. I'm not sure if it's something I'm doing wrong or if it's my cutter or things are looking pretty darn good. I am going to go over a little bit with the sandpaper. Um, just a teensy bit on the ends. Just to make sure the deck is smooth. I might edge this. Not sure what color yet, but I might I might put an edge on this. I kind of think with the really bright, beautiful colors of the art that um, an edging you know, might look kind of nice on this. I'm also going to make a box for this because now the original box <laughs> is uh, absurdly huge. I don't think it's, I don't think that's going to work anymore. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, make a box which, um, you know, if anybody's interested, I can make a video and show how I make boxes for the decks that I mod because often the original box doesn't really work too great after modding. Not too bad. So I think this was a this was another pretty successful modification. Like stuff looks really good. There's not a lot of unevenness at all. Um, I'm not really sure if this is going to rifle shuffle because it's a pretty thick cardstock, and the thicker the cardstock, the, the harder it is. As the size of the cards decreases, the harder it becomes to rifle shuffle. But I'll I'll give it a I'll give it a shot. that it sure does and those will you know loosen up over time maybe even get a little bit easier so that's um that's it for this one most of the work was done but I thought it would be kind of cool to show what I did and show off this just amazing art it's just so gorgeous and um, like for me, I just, it, the size is easier for me to handle. Um, and I, you know, I just love the art so much without, without the borders. Look at that, Knight of Cups. What a fantastic card. So that's it for me for this video. I will uh, plan to go ahead and do another video to show how I'm making the box for this deck and if I'm able to find a good solution for putting the titles on or putting the numbers basically back on the miners then I will uh, you know maybe make a quick little update with that and how I did it and what it looks like when it's completed because um, I'm just just not just not really in love with that ultra fine sharpie I think I can I think I can do better I think I can do better so that's my plan thank you for watching um, please check me out on Instagram I am at cart crossroads card slinger and if you have any questions or requests hit me up in the comments <laughs>